Inside this WHERE clause, the various sorts of expressions that you can create are referred to as predicates. And one of the most useful ways of creating a predicate is by using the LIKE operator. And we have several examples here of using LIKE. LIKE allows you to do pattern matching using wild cards. The standard wild card in SQL for any combination of characters or no characters at all is this percent sign. It's sort of the equivalent of the asterisk in DOS or Windows Explorer. In other words, in Windows Explorer, if you wanted to find all of the Word documents, you might search for star.doc. Well, the percent sign operates the same way in the SQL language. So here, I'm going to select last name, first name from TBL customer, where last name is like S percent. That's going to give me all the customers who have a last name beginning with S, followed by anything. And here you'll see that we have two customers with last names beginning with S. Now you can make this percent sign appear in the beginning of your expression. So now the name can start with anything at all, but it has to end in S. And we have several that end in S. You can also put that percent on both sides of some literal text. And here we're going to have any last name that has an S appearing anywhere in the name, either the beginning, the end, or anywhere in the middle. That percent sign is not the only wildcard character that you can work with using that like operator. You can also use the underscore character. And here we have two underscores next to each other. And each of these underscores can only represent a single character. Unlike the percent, which can represent any number of characters, underscore is only a single character. So here with two next to each other, basically we're looking for first name that begins with P, ends with L, and has only two other letters in the middle. And so we have several of those, Phil and a couple of Pauls. One final trick that you can use with the like operator is you can use square brackets in your expression to contain a list of allowed values. So here we have two such lists. We're saying we want a name that starts with either C or K, that then has ARS, and then either an O or an E, and finally an N. So in other words, any spelling of Carson is going to show up when we make this selection. And you see we have a couple of different Carsons, and they both showed up because either the C or the K was supported, and either the E or the O was supported. If you want, you can get a little more complex using those lists by making them lists of exclusion rather than lists of inclusion. Here we've used this caret character to say we do not want an O in this position. Anything else is fine, but not an O. So in this case, we'll only get back John Carson with an E there. Anything that had an O in that position is excluded when you use the caret before the character or list of characters inside your square brackets. Another operator that you can use in the predicates in your WHERE clause of the SELECT statement is BETWEEN. BETWEEN allows you to specify a range of values as we have here for zip code and in this case it's going to include all zip codes between 98103 and 98109. One point to note here is that the endpoints when you use between are also included. So for example, when I run this, I'm going to see everything including 98103, 98109, and all values in between would also be included. One thing I might mention, suppose I had highlighted including this comment up here. You notice that that has no effect, and you notice that the text here is greenish sort of an aqua color. The reason for that is we've used special characters at the beginning of that line. Two hyphens, one after another. Anytime you want to insert a comment, you can do it that way. Two hyphens at the beginning of the comments that are going to follow. Another thing that you can do for inserting comments is you can have slash asterisk 
that will begin a block of comments and you notice it has assumed that that block continues all the way down. Anytime you use the slash asterisk, you need to end your comments by just reversing the order of the characters, asterisk, slash. And you see now it highlighted the colors here again as sort of live data that we can execute and the comment is just everything that lies between those two pairs of comment characters. Two different ways of creating comments in the query analyzer. You are also going to want to occasionally test for null values. The ANSI default is that you cannot use equals null. You cannot say where phone equals null because the answer is always going to be null. Think of null as meaning unknown. If you ask me my age and I say I'm not going to tell you my age, at that point my age for you is unknown. If someone else comes over and says is Andy's age equal to 46? The only answer you can give is I don't know, it's unknown. So anytime you say is a value equal to null, the answer is always null. Is 6 equal to some unknown value? The answer must be unknown. If you want to test for an unknown value, you need to use is. And so that's why here we're saying we want to select the last name, first name, and phone from TBL customer where phone is null. The is operator is required when you're testing for nulls in most cases. It is possible to set your database so that the equal sign could be used here. However, I recommend using is since that will always be supported. Now you can create some slightly more complex criteria by using and. We'll also see examples where you can use or. So here we're testing for all of those customers where the city equals Seattle and the zip code begins with 9811 and then any other character. And so this will give us one set of customers, all the ones that meet both of those conditions. We can also use or to say either the city equals Seattle or the zip code begins with the 9811. And in some cases that'll give you a larger return set because it's only required for one or the other of those conditions to be met. And you can string together as, you know, as many as you need. This equals this, or that equals that, or some other thing, or some other thing. Another thing you can do is negate the logic or reverse the logic in your where expression. So here we're going to see where city is not like Seattle. Notice that the like operator can be used even if there is no wild card as sort of a synonym for equals. Now you can combine all these together, not, and, and or, and when you do, it's useful to know what's called the order of precedence. In other words, here we're saying last name is like percent %s%, percent, so it has an s in it, and not city is like Seattle, or zip code is greater than 98000. Now there's lots of different meanings that this could have depending on how we group these together. Are we saying that the last name has an S in it and the city is not Seattle as one condition or some other condition zip code greater than 98 or could we be saying instead the last name has an S in it and also the combination of city not being like Seattle or zip code greater than 98000. We can clarify this by using parentheses the same way you might in a mathematical expression. You could put parentheses around things like that. But you can also rely on the default order of precedence for these values and that order is that not is always evaluated first, then and will be evaluated, and finally or will be evaluated. So actually the default in this situation would be not what we have specified with parentheses. The default would be that not goes with city first, then the and. So then these all are going to be evaluated together. And finally, the combination there will be ORed with zip code. So either zip code greater than 98000 or last name has an S in it and city is not like Seattle.